This aquarium might look like it houses two different types of fish, but they are the exact same species. This is the ever fascinating errata cichlid from Lake Malawi. All of these guys start off as mini versions of themselves, stripes and all. At the end of around six months though, the males have matured and started changing color, going from yellow to like a blackish blue. And that's something I really enjoy about this fish is the males are so easily identifiable, yet dramatically different from the females, almost looking like a separate fish altogether. Now at this point, they're sexually mature, but if that isn't enough, the males will start to fight and attempt to establish dominance in their aquarium. When a male is confident enough in himself, he will dig impressions in the substrate and attempt to entice a mature female over with some seductive fin movements and flashing. The female will lay eggs and then scoop them up in her mouth where the male will release sperm into her egg-filled mouth, fertilizing them. And this is where we have a problem. The female will hold eggs in her mouth for up to three weeks. During this time, she won't eat, and that's for obvious reasons. When she finally does release the fry, they are tiny bite-sized snacks for everyone in the tank. So we need to consider intervening. By artificially incubating the fry ourselves, we can ensure maximum survival of the fry and health of the mother. Not only has she gone without three weeks and she's not eating and weakening herself over time, but if she spits those fry out in the tank, the odds of other fish eating them are incredibly high. So we need to consider intervening. By artificially incubating the fry ourselves, we ensure maximum survival of the fry and health of the mother. So we will do exactly that. So in today's video, we're going to strip the mouth brooding mothers. We're going to build an artificial incubator that will allow us to tumble the eggs similar to what goes on in the mother's mouth. And again, this is to ensure maximum survival of the fry and longevity and health of the mother. But how do we know if a female has eggs in her mouth in the first place? Well, simply put, the non mouth brooding fish will be obvious compared to one that is. The throat of a carrying mother will be bulging. So to build an artificial egg incubator or more commonly known as an egg tumbler in the hobby, we need a smooth container. My first thoughts as always was, how can we reuse a water bottle for this? And then I remember doing this years ago when I was raising a colony of frontos. I went to my local hardware store and I found some fluorescent light bulb covers. These are plastic, cheap. I only cost two bucks a piece for me. They were on sale. It was like this was meant to happen. I got them home, took the end caps off and set them aside. We're going to need these. Then cut them to the appropriate height. I like to do 75% of the aquarium's height. This ensures that I have lots of movement in terms of flow of the air bubbler. Then I took an old fish net that my piranha bit through and basically rendered it useless. Cut that up so I could create barriers in the incubator so fish can't get in and the fry can't get out. I removed all the extra plastic from the caps so we could have complete and full flow through the incubator. Then of course took some of that cut up net, put the top on and that was almost it. Of course, we're going to need to be able to mount this to the aquarium, so I drilled some holes in the side and took a old canister filters return line suction cup and put that on there. Now we'll move forward. We'll come back to how this works in a minute. I took a clear plastic container, which is a lot bigger than I necessarily would typically use, but I want to capture this on video. I filled it with some tank water and of course did a water change on the 120 gallon tank containing the aratus. I removed some of the decorations so they're easier to catch and then started catching the females. Now, depending on the stage of the fry that they are in the mother's mouth, she might simply release them anyways. She could get stressed and just spit them out because obviously self-preservation is the core of every living organism. For others that are not spitting them out, I take a plastic toothpick that's flimsy and not too sharp, but it's narrow enough to slip into the mother's mouth and forcefully open it. Once you kind of get it in there, she'll just open it and start spitting the fry out. And then once again, we have another problem. Not all the fry are going to be at the same stages of their life cycle. Some might be eggs, some might be tiny fry, some might be fully formed, some might still have a full yolk sac but can't swim around. Some might have a yolk sac but can swim around and which ones do we actually incubate? We're gonna wanna incubate the ones that uh, are unable to move around on themselves or are still an egg. These are the ones that we wanna simulate still being in the mother's mouth. To get these guys into the incubator, some people like to use spoons, which I feel is useless. Some others like to use a straw and suck them out. I think it's too high risk of sucking them into your mouth, while others will use a spoon and a straw. The ultimate tool to get these uh, fish out is gonna be a turkey baster or some sort of a syringe so you can just suck them out. I used to have a turkey baster just for this purpose, but I don't know where it is. So I just used some airline hose and a little container, created a siphon and sucked them out. This proved to be one of the fastest methods and safe. They're constantly uh, 
in contact with water. As for the incubator itself, the reason it's so tall is that I don't have, uh, a lot of people just have an airline pump uh, and it, the higher up in the tube you go, the less suction at the bottom it's going to be. And what we wanna do is continuously put that airline hose in until at the bottom, the eggs are just kind of tumbling around. They're not even really lifting off of that mesh. They're just moving around like they would in a mother's mouth. This is so that uh, fungus and other things cannot grow on them or kill them. Now we wait for like, we can wait up to two or three weeks waiting for these guys to become free swimming. And that is when we'll take them out of the incubator. And that is when we can start feeding those guys. For all the ones that were free swimming and or the ones that still had a little bit of yolk sac, they can go in the aquarium. And once that yolk sac is completely gone, I could begin feeding things like live brine shrimp or even frozen baby brine shrimp or even crushed up flake food. It doesn't have to be crazy or anything like that. Now there's actually a ton of fish that are breeding out here right now. Of course, the erratus, the shell dwellers, my walrus. Um, a, a few other fish that are showing signs and or I think they already have some might be pregnant etc but a big reason why I haven't been breeding is for this exact type of video not only do we have to have their main aquarium and deal with fish that are breeding and aggressive and you know some are even will even get killed by uh, uh, dominant males but then we have to have a grow out tank and a fry tank and different size <laughs> It's a lot to have if you want to get into uh, breeding fish, but and you better like them. And for somebody like me, I already dedicated, I don't want to dedicate too many tanks or resources to raising fish. My quarantine tanks are now filled with fry of, you know, even the convicts are breeding. There's uh, everybody starting to breed out here and I'll, dom I'll document all, uh, every fish, just like I am in this video. If you guys like this type of video, make sure you give it a thumbs up so I know. But then what do you do with the fry? Of course, we have a number of options. And I've made a video about this before, about breeding fish um, and why I stopped. Of course, when you have fish for sale and you put them up for sale on different sites, uh, you got to deal with people that are going to be late, people that don't show up, people that come early, people that stay too long, um, you know, changing schedules. It's constant all day, back and forth. And then, and it just becomes a bit, it just becomes a bit of a headache. And then of course, what would I suggest if you had fry it? Well, get involved with your local aquarium club. A lot of the times they'll have auctions or they'll have a fry exchange or that you could potentially just donate them to the club so they can raise money uh, or make a, get a, or develop a relationship with your local fish store. Let them know that you plan on breeding these fish. And if you do, and you can bring them in healthy, are they willing to purchase and or give you store credit? And that's probably one of your best bets because selling, you can flood the local market incredibly quickly and or flood the people that you are able to sell to. The store is going to have access to far more hobbyists than you ever will. So a lot of these things are something to think about. Uh, I don't mind breeding right now, so long as it doesn't become uh, overwhelming with too many fry. Uh, I do like to document the process and the life cycle of the aquarium hobby is huge and breeding fish is a big part of that so again if you guys like this type of video let me know in the comment section below if you have anything to add also leave that in the comment section below i'll see you guys in the next video